What if you stumbled into a parallel universe and found that your life there was better? In movies and TV shows, this often leads to dramatic twists, sometimes even replacing the version of yourself in that world. But if you think this is just artistic fiction, think again. The concept of parallel universes has roots in ancient philosophy. With the advent of quantum theory, particularly Everett's many worlds interpretation, this once speculative idea has evolved into a physical theory grounded in solid mathematics. You've likely heard of quantum mechanics. In this video, we'll take you on a journey into its fascinating world, unraveling its core principles through storytelling. Along the way, we'll explore mind-bending concepts, from the origins of quantum theory to the possibility of parallel universes. If you feel your understanding of quantum physics is still limited, this video is perfect for you. Let's begin our journey with light, the force that illuminates our world. Imagine 16th century Europe, where Christianity profoundly shaped society. People gathered in churches to hear priests share Bible stories. For many who couldn't read, these stories were their window to understanding the world. Stained glass windows, religious dramas, and sculptures brought these narratives to life. The Bible says, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Light became a symbol of holiness and divine creation. After the flood, a rainbow symbolized the covenant between God and humanity. But humanity's exploration of light went far beyond spiritual interpretations. In the medieval Islamic world, the scientist Alhazen revolutionized optics through groundbreaking research on light's behavior, including its propagation, reflection, and refraction. His book of optics became a cornerstone of knowledge that would later inspire Europe's Renaissance and the Scientific Revolution. Fast forward to the 17th century when the Renaissance, Reformation, and Enlightenment reignited curiosity about the natural world. Among the most remarkable seekers of knowledge was Isaac Newton, born in 1643. In 1666, Newton conducted a transformative experiment. He passed sunlight through a prism and observed it splitting into seven vibrant colors red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Sound familiar? It's the same phenomenon you see in a rainbow. Newton's experiment revealed that sunlight isn't pure white. It's a mixture of colors. This discovery also explains the changing colors of sunlight during the day. At sunrise, sunlight travels through a thicker layer of the atmosphere before reaching your eyes. Blue light, which scatters more easily, is mostly filtered out, leaving reddish hues. As the sun climbs higher, the atmospheric layer becomes thinner, allowing more blue light to reach your eyes and balancing the colors. By noon, when sunlight travels through the thinnest layer of atmosphere, all the colors combine, making the sunlight appear white. This scattering effect also explains why the sky looks blue. The atmosphere scatters blue light in all directions filling the sky with its color. But if you were in space, without an atmosphere, you'd see an endless expanse of unfathomable darkness. Light surrounds us every day, visible and warm, yet always intangible. This elusive quality makes studying light uniquely challenging, but it has never deterred scientists. As the scientific age progressed, so did humanity's understanding of light. For instance, we discovered that light travels as waves oscillating up and down and determined its speed in a vacuum, an astonishing 300,000 kilometers per second. Around the same time, advancements in electricity revealed a fascinating connection between electric currents and the magnetic forces surrounding them. The breakthrough came in 1865 when physicist James Clerk Maxwell developed his theory of the electromagnetic field. Maxwell proposed that waves could exist in space, oscillating with both electric and magnetic components. These fields, he discovered, oscillate perpendicularly to each other and to the direction of the wave's motion. Maxwell called them electromagnetic waves. 
The most thrilling part of Maxwell's work was his calculation of their propagation speed. Approximately 300,000 kilometers per second, the same as the speed of light. Convinced that this was no coincidence, Maxwell proposed a bold idea. Light itself is an electromagnetic wave. Twenty years later, physicist Heinrich Rudolf Hertz confirmed this by generating and detecting electromagnetic waves for the first time, cementing Maxwell's revolutionary theory in the annals of science. As scientists discovered more types of electromagnetic waves in nature, they noticed one key distinction. Light is visible to the human eye, while other waves are not. The sun, our largest source of electromagnetic radiation, emits a spectrum that includes both visible and invisible light. The visible spectrum is bordered by invisible waves, infrared, microwaves, and radio waves on one side, and ultraviolet X-rays and gamma rays on the other. But what's visible isn't the same for every species. Humans, for example, can't see infrared light, but snakes can. For them, infrared is part of their visible world, allowing them to see heat patterns that are invisible to us. Scientific progress often leads to technological breakthroughs. Initially, humans used visible light mainly for illumination, but over time, we unlocked the potential of invisible wavelengths. Infrared became essential for remote controls and thermal imaging. Microwaves revolutionized cooking and communications. Radio waves transformed broadcasting and navigation. Ultraviolet light helped us with disinfection, while X-rays and gamma rays forever changed medicine. Do you think humanity has reached the limits of its understanding of light? If your answer is yes, it wouldn't be surprising. Some scientists shared that view in the early 20th century. At the time, various branches of physics were flourishing, and many believed that the framework of classical physics was nearly perfect. In 1900, British physicist Lord Kelvin famously stated that only two dark clouds remained in the sky of classical physics. The issue of the invariance of the speed of light, highlighted by the Michelson-Morley experiment and the problem of blackbody radiation. These challenges ultimately sparked a revolution in modern physics, transforming our understanding of light and the universe. Let's start by breaking down the ideas of wavelength and frequency. In this diagram, electromagnetic waves are arranged by their frequency. Frequency is simply how fast the wave oscillates, while wavelength is the distance between two consecutive wave crests. To make this clearer, imagine the wavelength as the step size of a light wave and frequency as the rhythm of those steps. Since the speed of light is constant, a longer wavelength means a slower rhythm and a lower frequency, while a shorter wavelength means a faster rhythm and a higher frequency. Now let's look at one of the challenges that once puzzled scientists, black body radiation. Imagine an ideal object that absorbs all light and heat without reflecting any. This is what we call a black body. It doesn't just absorb light, it transforms that energy into heat and re-emits it as light, a phenomenon known as black body radiation. For example, think of a piece of metal heated to an extremely high temperature. As it gets hotter, it starts to glow, first red, then orange, and eventually white as the temperature increases further. This demonstrates how the color of light emitted by an object depends on its temperature. So, what was the ultraviolet catastrophe? Scientists at the time tried to predict the behavior of black body radiation using classical physics, particularly the light emitted at different temperatures. According to classical theory, an object should emit light across all frequencies, and the higher the temperature, the stronger the radiation would be at higher frequencies, like ultraviolet light. In theory, if the temperature kept rising, the amount of ultraviolet light emitted would increase without limit. But when experiments were conducted, the results were very different. Instead of radiation continuing to increase infinitely in the ultraviolet region, it peaked and then began to drop. This was the ultraviolet catastrophe, 
a major discrepancy between theory and what experiments actually showed. The results left scientists at the time scratching their heads. At the end of the 19th century, it was widely believed that energy was a continuous physical quantity. This assumption aligned with the intuition of classical physics. For example, temperature, mass, or speed can be adjusted continuously, taking any value without restriction. It's like burning calories in the gym, from 20 kilocalories to 80 kilocalories. The process is seamless, and any intermediate value is possible. However, in everyday life, we often encounter examples of discontinuity. For instance, you can buy a movie ticket or two tickets, but trying to buy 1.5 tickets simply doesn't make sense. Scientific breakthroughs often begin by challenging conventional assumptions. In 1900, German physicist Max Planck made a bold proposal. While electromagnetic waves appear continuous on a macroscopic scale, their energy is actually discontinuous at a microscopic level. Instead, it exists in the smallest indivisible units, or packets. This was a revolutionary departure from the classical worldview. Building on this groundbreaking idea, Planck formulated an energy equation that successfully matched the experimental data on blackbody radiation. This not only resolved the long-standing ultraviolet catastrophe, but also exposed the limitations of classical physics in explaining microscopic phenomena. Unlike everyday objects like a glass of water or a sheet of paper, the concept of discrete energy units was entirely new. To describe this, Planck introduced the term quantum, laying the foundation for quantum mechanics. Although quantum mechanics has since evolved into a field filled with complex theories and mathematical frameworks, its core idea remains surprisingly straightforward. Many seemingly continuous physical quantities, such as energy or momentum, are, at their core, composed of discrete units, or quanta, at the microscopic level. Although Planck's solution began as a mere hypothesis, its remarkable accuracy hinted at deeper objective laws still unknown, laws that transcend classical physics. Five years later, Albert Einstein, a physicist as revolutionary as Newton, unraveled the mystery behind this potential law. What did Einstein discover about the quantum world? What truths about nature did he reveal? And what do concepts like superposition, entanglement, wave-particle duality, and parallel universes truly mean? We'll delve into all of this in the next episode.